Cool. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Good? All right. Excellent. Let's wake up a little bit, mildly. I promise to be uh, a little bit entertaining. How about that? So uh, my name is Graham McBain. I am the head of DevRel at Copilot Kit. Um, just like for my understanding, you've probably raised your hand a thousand times today, but have you built an agent? Raise your hand. Nito, Fundito, have you brought it into production and uh, built an interface for users to interact with that agent? Okay, that's like, there's 10 people that raised their hand and that's like 10 times as many as last time. So that's very exciting. So that the people are actually uh, starting to do this. So um, you can maybe see where I'm going with this. Um, Copilot Kit, we've been around for about a year and a half. When I joined, we had about 10,000 GitHub stars. We're almost at 20,000 now. Um, we've got, I think we just hit 23,000 weekly installs. Millions of interactions happen through Copilot Kit on a daily, weekly basis. Um, and as big as, you know, huge public companies and indie builders all use it. It's a fully open source product um, and super cool and, and easy and intuitive to use. And hopefully this presentation will show you that. So here's our whole concept. We want to bridge human and artificial intelligence. The idea is that um, everybody thinks that they can build an autonomous agent that will take, you know, a job and then they can fire a bunch of people and then, you know, they save their shareholders money and everybody's happy. Um, if you've built an agent, you realize that's probably not the case unless it's like a tightly scoped, very little, uh, you know, single problem, it needs help and it needs interaction. And so that's where Copilot Kit comes in. Um, before we go into that a little bit more detail, I just want to talk about what we're going to talk about today so you can set your expectations low um, and then you can figure out if you want to keep listening. So we're going to talk about the different types of Copilots. Um, we're going to talk about why you want to build them. I'm going to show you a quick demo of how you actually use Copilot Kit to bring it into a React application. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about where we're heading and then at the end I'm going to show off um, the new thing we're announcing, which we hope is very exciting, but you know we live in this every day. I'm sure all of you are working on stuff, and you're like, everyone's gonna be so excited about this, and then you tweet about it and nobody cares. We'll see if that goes for us, but I'm excited. So, um, what is an AI co-pilot? Uh, really, it's something that's purpose-built to work alongside people. I like to think of it like the, the shared workspace where agents and humans work together. Um, a lot of people don't think this is a big deal, but if those 10 of you that raised your hand, you know that there's nuance there. And deploying an agent that you can interface with through the command line is way different than deploying an agent that a human can actually work with in detail and actually get things done. It's sort of like um, when they first started building humanoid robots, they realized that the hardest problem was a handshake because robots would just like crush all the bones in your fingers. Um, and so we wanna build uh, web robots that don't crush all the bones in your finger. I don't know, I'm still working on that. Um, we'll see how that goes. So. There's really two kinds of co-pilots that are like in production today. There's the concierge style, which you can think of as sort of like a helper chatbot, which many of you have seen. Um, and then there's this like cursor style application that we're all seeing. So all of you are in here, mostly coders for some degree. You actually are more familiar with this cursor style app, but most of your friends and colleagues, well, not your friends and colleagues, because they're all in tech and they all know about this stuff, but normal human beings who touch grass on a regular basis and exist outside the bubble of the Bay Area um, have not seen these applications yet, right? Like they're still working in QuickBooks and they are still working in other um, horrible software that was built here 50 years ago and is still being used across the world. So um, these jokes are getting better, I promise. So here's a way to think about this. It's, it's a little thing that's really great at some stuff but not great at other stuff. And you might be able to see this, oh, I haven't gotten to that part yet. All right, I'll talk about some of the examples later. Let's do a demo, I'll shut up. So, um, here's what we're gonna do. You, who's spun up a React app before? If you don't raise your hand, you're lying. It's really easy, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, cool. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring up Cursor, everybody's favorite thing. You notice I already spun up a React app. Eugen's not here, but this React app is called I Love Eugen. So, um, if you're listening, I just heard his ears perk up because his name is his favorite word. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump over to the Copilot Kit docs. We're just going to, we've got a, you know, initialize React app. You saw that we did that there. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, Copilot Kit init. So here's what this is doing. You've got an agent in the background. We're gonna use a crew AI agent today. You can see we support LangGraph. We've got the ability to bring MCP into your application and also any other agent framework that you've used. We're gonna start supporting um, Mastra soon and then AG2 all the other frameworks and then the thing we're announcing at the end today will we'll make it really exciting. So we'll bring in a crew agent, we'll use crew crews. If you know there's a difference between those, those there's a difference between them. Um, and then we'll say this, I'm gonna call this crew still uh, love Eugen, even though he's not here. Um, all right, so 
this is cool. It's really easy. We've got our, our React application. All I have to do is go to Crew AI Enterprise Platform. Has anybody seen this platform before? It's a little plug for them. It's really nice. You deploy an agent. You just grab the URL. So we grab our URL, paste it in here. Hit enter. We grab our bearer token. OK. Enter that in here. Sounds good. Now, um, this application, because we initialized crew, uh, Copilot Kit, it's automatically connected to Copilot Kit Cloud. So I'm just going to go to Copilot Kit Cloud here. Um, and I'm going to ensure that this project is the right one. So let's look at our. Cool. All right. So HBRK, HBRK, very good. So um, what we're doing is we're basically going to connect our Crew AI to our Copilot Kit Cloud instance. And you can imagine how you could also then connect a LangGraph agent or a Mostra agent or an MCP server or anything else that your application needs to interface with. Instead of having to write to all of those different frameworks and all those different tools individually, you can just connect to Copilot Kit and we extract away all the sort of cognitive load of your application. And so make it really simple so that you're Users can, or your, your front end devs can just build an application and your you know, cognitive team, for lack of a better word, I'm coining that now if anybody wants to tweet it, um, can handle the rest of the, the back end stuff. So let's go back here. Yes, that is correct. We'll hit correct. Very good. So that's been added to Copilot Kit Cloud. Um, let's say yes to all these things. Who wants to pick a uh, theme? Zinc. Zinc? Okay. Okay. He's strong opinions about Zinc. I love it. Okay, so let's go check Copilot Kit Cloud. All right, you can see our remote endpoints. We've got this Crew AI crew now. So you can see how easy that was. And then boom, we're going to force it because it's a computer and I don't care. Just kidding, robot overlords. I do care for future. What does anybody, who, where do you fall on the like 100 men versus a gorilla? Raise your hand if you're on the 100 men side of things. Okay, idiot. Um, everyone else is on the right side of things. I'm sorry, didn't mean to, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Okay, um, so do 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 do. But clearly, it's the right choice. Um, npm run dev. All right, beauty. Oh wait, I didn't. I did that so I don't have to copy paste. So, and I know you can just click on it. I just am, don't like to. So here we go. Um, so we're seeing on the left-hand side here, we've got our chat interface. Uh, where's a restaurant? Where's the location you want to find a restaurant? Because we use the restaurant finder crew from Crew AI. Anyone? Any city? Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, I can't even spell Atlanta. Jeez, you guys make me so nervous. Um, OK. So um, we're going to let this run for a minute, the Crew AI crew. I don't think I may, may need to pay to make them run faster. But basically, you can see we're showing off what's happening here. This is just like some of the features you need to build into your application to make it so that people have trust that the agent's doing what the user actually asked of it. So this is going to run for a little bit, and then it's going to we're going to approve it, and then it's going to show over here on the right side of the application. But um, that's basically it. With with a few clicks uh, and one like two code lines or uh, commands in our command line, we've got a React app running, we've got a production agent running. And those two are connected to a chat interface that a user can use inside your application. Super simple, super easy to use, and it's going to be multi-agent um, platform soon. So that's our brief little demo. But let's jump back, and I want to talk about other fun stuff first. So if you want to say, with our, if you're interested in using this, check out our docs right now. I'll leave this up. I'll formally apologize again for calling you an idiot. I'm sorry. You are wrong, but I apologize. Um, so. Frankly, this is the like horse-sized duck and duck-sized horse of our generation. But anyway, um, so where are these like this co-pilot thing headed? Um, this is where the, that world outside of our world. This is where we think it's sort of heading. If you've got a not PMs, they're all here. We don't. Sorry for the PMs in the world. Um, we're all PMs in our hearts. But so like, uh, if you're you're a tax person, they may have like other people that are helping them out. You've got your your legal team, and they've got a paralegal. They're going to have a co-pilot paralegal that's going to be doing research for them. I have a friend who uh, is going through law school right now, and he doesn't believe me that he's not going to have paralegals, and he's just going to be talking to an agent. And I try to tell him that he's an idiot, but he doesn't listen to me. Um, and But all of these tools are going to have an opportunity. So A, that's an opportunity for anybody here who's not sure what to build yet with an agent. Pick any industry that has administrative professionals and build an agent, build a, a co-pilot that the professionals can use alongside their daily work. 
a lot of people are trying to build standalone agents that handle all the customer calls or handle all the support tickets. I think that's uh, maybe a good idea, but I think in the long run, somebody who works alongside you is actually gonna be a more interesting opportunity. But there's parts about it that's not easy, um, and that's gonna be that agent orchestration. So if you've got multiple different frameworks, they all emit events to the front end in different ways and with different nuances. And so building a single front end that handles all of those different agent frameworks is not uh, sustainable. So I, I, did anybody see the video that Replit put out? They did a, a, like an hour long demo of all the, team, all the people on their um, agent team and they went through every single person and it's an incredibly robust team. I think it's like 20 or 30 people that just build their agent. And they're using all kinds of different frameworks. They started using LangGraph. They started rolling their own stuff. They're using like three different observability tools. And they have a lot of time, a lot of like a hell of a time getting all that together. So A, I recommend watching that video, but B, it's more work than you might think. Um, but then that the things like shared state, shared state and streaming are all really, really complicated. Um, so let's talk about some of that stuff. So what is Copilot Kit? We talked about this a little bit, but Everybody likes graphs. If you're like me and you have a smooth brain, you want to see how things are look like. So this is sort of how the modern application works. You've got your cognitive layer at the bottom, you get your orchestration in the middle, and then you've got Copilot Kit at the top. There are other companies, but I don't want to acknowledge their existence. Um, and uh, so let's talk about some of the features here. So this is human in the loop. You guys have all heard this word. You may think of it as like there's an actual, you know, something happens and you send it to a bank of people and some of them handle it, but really it's, if you have a complicated query that the agent needs impact on, you can give them something like this. So this checkbox is a pre-built React component that, that we built, but then the agent has the ability to surface it to the user inside the chat or inside the application. Um, agentic generative UI, this is something we talked about when it comes to uh, how do you actually make the agent have trust. So this is surfacing in a, you know, kind of pretty way all the things that the agent's doing while you ask it a question. This is like um, when they, there was a building that wanted to make elevators, uh, spend a lot of money to make their elevators go faster, and a UI designer came and said, no, just put mirrors in the lobby, and people will so be, be so distracted by looking at themselves, they won't care how long the elevator takes. This is sort of that idea, like agent processes can run for between two and five minutes. So you need to give the user something to know that the agent's actually doing the work that you expect it to do. And agentic generative UI, again, can happen inside the chat or inside the application. Um, this is tool-based generative UI, so we, we built a tool for this agent in the background, this is a haiku generator. Um, and then that haiku generator has a UI tool that it can actually generate these new cards and then surface them to the user, and then the user can actually apply it from the chat to the application. This is um, actually a, the core concept if you think about building a copilot. This is shared state. So the state of the application and the state of the user are one and the same. And so the application, the user comes in and checks its dietary preferences and then asks the, the user asks the agent, hey, can you build me a recipe? Well, the agent needs to know what all those dietary preferences are and he doesn't want the user to have to type it out. So you should be able to just move these things back and forth and check and move boxes. Um, there's a company that does data transformations that uses Copilot Kit and they have people that were clicking, you know, 30 or 40 clicks to build a complicated join in order to search all their, their data. And with Copilot, they were able to just sort of talk to their uh, platform and get the query that they need and go, oh no, don't join here, join there. And it saved tons of time and more users were using the platform. Um, this is uh, predictive state rendering. And so any of you used um, Notion's AI tool? Where you basically copy in stuff from ChatGPT and then say, format this as Notion. Um, it, what it shows you is sort of a preview of how things are going. So this is the state that the application is going to be once the user accepts it. This is another one of those like little nuances that you don't think about when you're building an application. So I've got a minute left. This is the cool part. I talked about how there's all these different agents and they all emit information in different ways. Um, we're coming out with a protocol so that any agent framework or any agent that you roll yourself, as long as the uh, as long as, as long as the events that your uh, agent is emitting conform to our protocol, they'll be supported in Copilot Kit. And Copilot Kit is fully open source, and so anybody can build front ends that actually adhere to this. So we're trying to build an open protocol standard so that agents can just admit events in a certain way, front ends can just send information in a certain way, and then all those things can talk together um, just out of the box for free. So thank you very much. I've got 16 seconds left. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email. You can take that down. Um, and then for the last five seconds, you can scan again to get to our docs. So thank you, appreciate it.
All right. Thank you, Graham. Perfect timing.